Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leet Code called Merge Case Sorted List. It's a hard, we're gonna jump right into it. You were given an array of k linked lists called lists, and each linked list is sorted in ascending order. Merge all the linked lists into one sorted linked list and return it. Example one, we have the following linked list sorted in ascending order. We just wanna merge that into one sorted list and return it. Example two, we have a list, but there are no lists inside of it, so we return the empty list. And example three, we have a list of lists, and the only list has nothing inside it. So again, we return the empty list. So we're given K a sorted linked list. We want to merge all of that into one sorted list and return it. How are we going to do that? Now, this question is actually very simple. We just need to start with examples. So say I have the following sorted linked list, right? This is my input. I have three lists right over here. Now, if I want to return one big sorted list, I want to start with the smallest element and work my way up covering all the elements in all of these lists, right? Now, what do I know about these lists? These are sorted in ascending order. So the smallest element for every single list is going to be at the front right over here. And the next smallest element for every single list is going to be the second element over here and so forth. But I don't know anything about the list themselves and how they relate to each other. I just know their smallest values are in the front over here. So what if we just take every single value in the front, compare it and take the smallest value of that? So if I were to compare all three of these values, one, two, and one, what is the smallest value here? It could be this one or this one, doesn't matter which one I take, but it is a one. So constructing my new merged big linked list that I wanna to return to the end, I know it's gonna start with a one and say I went with this one over here. Well, now that I've already used up this first node, I can no longer use it anymore. So what is the next smallest element? Again, I know that this is the smallest element from this list. This is the smallest one from this list. And now this is the smallest one for this list. I just need to compare the smallest value between all three of these to find out my overall smallest next value. So comparing five, two, and one, what is the smallest? Again, it's this one over here. So I'm going to add it as a next node in my link to list. And I also no longer can use this one anymore. Now, how do I figure out the next smallest element? Again, I have five, I have two, and now I have three. So I need to figure out the smallest overall. Again, I just need to compare all three of these. But if you remember, we already compared the five and the two when we first came across the five. So instead of comparing them every single time, we can just sort them. So say we were at the beginning again, right? We hadn't come across any of these ones. What I wanna do is take these first elements and just sort them. So I know my smallest is one, then one, and then two. So now that when I do take a one, I know it's going to be this first element in this sorted array, and I can just add this to my final returning link to list. It's no longer gonna be here anymore since we can't use it. Now, once I use the five, since this is the next smallest element of this array, I just need to add this to my already sorted array. Now, a binary insert or a binary search, that is going to be log of k times if there are k elements in this sorted list already. So any inserts, for example, inserting a five is going to be a log base operation. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this five here. And now I want the next smallest element, right? I just look at the front of the list again. And I just add that to the current linked list that I'm building. So now we have one and one. Now, since I did use this one, I can no longer use this one over here. So now I need to see what the next smallest element is of this list over here. That's going to be three. So now I can go ahead and add that to my sorted array. Doing a binary insert, I have this over here. Basically what we're working with right now is this five, this two, and this three all the current heads of our individually sorted linked list. And we just keep doing this, right? The next smallest element is going to be two. So I'm going to add that over here and remove it from my current sorted list. And now add its next node to my sorted array. So this is where we are right now. And we just keep doing that up until we go through every single linked list node and there are no more nodes to process. Now, instead of manually sorting it every single time, we can use one of our data structures. It's called a min heap. A min heap, what is that? It's just going to be this sorted structure. Internally, it is actually shaped like a tree. It's a binary tree and it's sorted internally, but we have heap push and heap pop available to us. And all it does is it pushes an element into our sorted structure, maintaining the sorted invariant. So it's always going to be sorted in ascending order. And when we heap pop, similar to a stack pop, right? Instead of popping the last element, here we get the smallest element. So it keeps the sorted structure for us on our behalf. We don't need to manually go and sort it every single time. So that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and code this up and then do a complete walkthrough. To code this up, the first thing I'm going to do is import my heap Q. So import heap Q. Now I'm just going to define a list called min heap. So min heap is going to be the empty list over here. What's next? I want to go through all the linked lists in my given list and add this first element to this thing called min heap. 
So for node in my list, I'm going to make a check if node. For example, we can have empty lists, right? This over here was an empty list. It didn't even have a node. So we don't want to run into that problem, which is why we're checking if the node exists. If it does exist, then I'm going to add it to my min heap. So it's going to be heap q dot heap push. We're just going to push into our heap. And if this is unfamiliar to you, if you've never worked with heaps before, I'm actually going to link the Python docs below if you do want to read up more on that or just check it out. But basically we have heap Q and it has a command called heap push, which pushes onto a heap we're going to define here. So we put it over here as min heap. We want to push into this min heap. And what do we want to push in? We want to keep track of two things, the value and the node itself. So I'm going to push in first my node.val and the second part of my tuple is going to be the node itself. Why am I doing this, right? I'm putting in a tuple because that way I have the value that I'm going to sort on. Say it's this value three over here, right? Now, once I use it in my linked list, I remove it. I do a heap pop. But how do I know what next value to add on? It needs to be the next node of this node's value, right? If this was a three over here, I now need to get this node over here and I can't get it with a value by itself. That's why once I pop, I get the value as well as the node itself, because that lets me now know that I want to add this node and this value into my heap. So I'm going to add both of these to my heap. And at this point, we have all these first elements in our heap. Now, what do we do? If you haven't watched merge two sorted lists, I'm also linking that down below. Go give that a watch. It'll show you how to merge linked lists. But what we want to do is start with a dummy node. So I'm going to initialize that to be dummy and it's going to be a new node. So our class over here is list node. So in list node, I'm going to be passing in a value of zero. Now this is just a dummy node and I'm also going to have a current pointer point to this dummy node. Now what I want to do is get elements from my min heap. So while there are still elements in that min heap, so while min heap, while it is not none, I'm going to pop from that min heap. So heap q dot heap pop. And where am I popping from? I'm popping from this min heap that we have storing all of our elements. And with this, I'm going to get a tuple, right? So I can directly save that as a value and the node itself. Now this is going to store the next smallest value that I have and the node that I have it on. Now I just want to build up one final big merge sorted list, right? So I'm going to have current next, so current dot next point to this node that I just popped. So now that current next node is the node we're at, I'm going to move current to point to this node. So that way I can just keep building up. So now current equals current dot next. So we just removed our smallest element and added it to our final merge linked list. Now we want to add the next smallest element of the linked list that we just removed that node from. Well, that's pretty simple, right? We have the node that we are using. So we just need to check if the next node of this node exists because say we're at 12 over here, we've gone through everything next doesn't exist. So we don't want to add anything to min heap if that's the case. But if node.next is not none, so if node.next, if this does exist, we just want to add this to our min heap. So again, heap q dot heap push in heap. And what are we going to add on? Well, it's going to be the next of this node. So node next dot val and node dot next itself. So now our heap is repopulated with more elements. We go back in this while loop, do the same thing again, get that smallest element, add that to our current big merge linked list next node and add that next element of the node we just popped. In the end, all we have to do is return dummy dot next. That is going to point to the start of our merged linked list. So return dummy dot next. So now if I go ahead and run this code, we're going to get a type error. And that is because we could have ties, right? Say we have two ones in our min heap. Well, how do we know which one to take? We need some way to differentiate them. So what I'm also going to be passing in is the index of the list itself. So this is the first list. This is the second list. This is the third list, right? If list one and list three both have one as their node values, I'm going to say just take the smallest of this first list over here. So I'm just going to pass in the index as a tie break. So in order to fix this, I'm also passing in an index. So I'm going to enumerate this. So now I have the index stored in I over here. I'm adding to heap push a tuple with an I. So this is going to be my tie break. And over here, now I pop off an I as an index. So now I'm also going to be passing that in over here. All this is doing is say I got the one from list zero over here. Well, now I popped off this element. I know it's from list zero. I now add in five, also marking that this is from list zero. So in case I see another five, we have a tie break and we'll take the smaller list index. So now let's go ahead and submit this. 
and it is accepted. Now, talking about space and time complexity, looking at this example again, say I have K sorted lists. So I have one, two, and three. Now it's hard to know how many elements are going to be in each list. It can vary, right? Each linked list can have a different number of elements. So say on average, every linked list has an elements. What is going to be our time complexity? Well, we're going to be taking every single node and adding that to our big merged linked list that we return in the end, right? But we also insert it into a sorted heap, which is going to store K elements if there are K linked lists. So inserting something into a sorted list of size K, that is going to take log of K time. And we've done binary search in the past. If you do want to know more on that, I'm going to link that down below as well. But since we're going to do this for every single element, say we actually have N nodes in total. That is going to be log of K. And since we're doing it for every single element, that is going to be N log K. Now, I also want to go over why this is better than, say, brute force approach. Say I had this list over here and I merged it with this one. So now I have a really big list consisting of both of the nodes from these two lists. Now I want to take this list and merge that into that really big list again, right? I keep doing that for every single list that I have. Why is that going to take longer? Well, I have N nodes in this first list over here, right? That is N. Now, if I merge my second list, which also has N nodes, I'm comparing potentially between every single node. So this is going to take two N. I'm going through this list and this list in order to merge it into one big list. Like so, I want to go ahead and merge this list into that list. So how long is this going to take? Well, this is now two N. So I need to go through two N nodes as well as N over here, basically comparing every single node and merging it in together. So this is going to be 2n plus n, which means this operation is now going to be 3n. And say I had another linked list. Well, merging that into now this big merge list, how long is that going to take? That is going to be 3n plus n. So this is going to be 4n. Now, we don't really care about constants when talking about time complexity. So say we got rid of all of these, right? 2n, 3n, 4n. But we're going to do this k times. So this is actually going to be n into k which is why it's actually better to use a min heap. Now, also talking about space complexity for space, we're just keeping track of a heap, which at most is only going to store K elements, the number of linked lists that we have. So that is going to be O of K for space. Now, before leaving, let's do a complete walkthrough of our code with an example going line by line to make sure we truly understand exactly what is happening. So say we have the following example. This is just from example one. We have the following linked list. Going through this line by line, the first thing we do is initialize our min heap. So it's going to be empty over here. Now we're looping through for i in node in enumerate list. So our first index is this first list over here, and we're only ever given the head of a linked list, right? So we have node over here. Now we have i in node. If this node exists, which it does, we are going to push onto our min heap a tuple with node.val, which is one, our index, which is zero. This is the zero with list over here and the node itself. And for visualization purposes, I'm going to define the node as just an extra bracket over here. So now that I've pushed this onto heap, I go back in my for loop. I is over here one and node is now one over here. So doing the same thing, pushing this onto my heap since this node does exist. I have a tuple with the value, with the index and the node itself. Going back in the for loop, index is now two and our node is also now two. So our value is two, our index is two and our node itself is two. So we just finished going in this for loop. Now we're going to initialize our dummy and current pointers. So dummy equals a list node of just zero and current equals dummy. So they're both pointing to the same list node of zero. Now while min heap, while there are elements in this min heap, that is true, we pop from min heap. So we're given the smallest value. Now, both of these are the smallest value. So the tie break here is the index. So we get this over here and we store this in val i node. So val equals one, i equals zero and node equals one. And since this has been popped, it is no longer in our min heap. Now current dot next points to this node that we have. So it's pointing to one and now current is going to equal current dot next. So current moves down to one. Now we make a check if node dot next, what is our nodes next? Our node was this one over here and it does have a next. So we're going to push into our heap, this value, this node, and this index. So we're pushing into min heap node.next.val. So that's going to be four. I, which was zero, because this is the zeroth list that we have, and the node itself. So that's going to be four. We go back in this while loop. This is true, min heap does exist, it's not empty. So now we pop off the smallest value again. And this is sorted by that first element in our tuple. So it's going to be by the value itself. 
and internally you just want to reiterate that it's actually a tree structure I'm just using this for visualization purposes, but it's technically a black box. We don't really know what's going on in there. We just push and pop. So over here, we pop off the smallest element. What do we get? L is one, index is one, and node is one. We set our current down next to that node, and now we move current down to it. So we just finish executing these lines, and now we check node.next. If this is true, so if this node has a next node, so over here it does, right? Its next node is three. We just push it in. So it's going to be three, one, and the node itself. Going back in this loop, popping off the smallest element, we have two, two, two. We set current next to be this node and move current down. Now two does have a next node, so we're going to add that to our heap. So we're adding the value of this next node, the index it was on, which was two, and the node itself. Again, we're just back in this while loop, right? We do a heap.pop, so we get three, one, and three. Setting current to be that node and moving current down. And now adding the final node in this linked list. So that's four, one, and four. We're back over here and now we want to pop off the min element. Both of these values were four. So we're going to use a tie break over here. This is a lower index than this one. So we're going to go with this four since it doesn't actually matter to us. So we add this now as current next and move current down. And we also push into our heap min that next node. So the value, the index and the node itself. And we're back in this loop. This time min pop will give us this element over here. We go ahead and add that to current, move it down, and now we check for its next node. This four doesn't have a next, so we don't push into the heap and we're back in the loop. We pop off the min element, so we get the value index node and add current next to be that node. So now that this line is done, we now move current on next. And this node also doesn't have a next node, so we don't push anything onto the heap and we go back in the while loop. So now once we pop from heap the smallest element, it's just one element. So the value is six, the index is two, and the node is six. Setting currents next to that node and moving current down, we see that this node doesn't have a next node. So we don't add anything to heap and now min heap is empty. So we don't go in this while loop and we return dummy.next. Now dummy was just a dummy node. So we return the next, which correctly points to the head of this new merged final linked list. And it's one, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, which is exactly what we were expecting. So we just went ahead and did merge case sorted lists. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.